we, we will not be surprised sometimes in April that uh, Raila Odinga and William Ruto are having a handshake at the lawns of uh, Harambe House or in State House? Not at all. Have you seen William Ruto since he was, uh, uh, he was uh, inaugurated? No. Okay. Mm. Even on TV? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you've seen it. So, well, a very good evening and uh, welcome to this special edition of uh, our talks with the leaders of this country. And tonight we talk to Raila Odinga, Azimio One Kenya Coalition leader. There's a lot of things that have been happening in the country in the last few days. And uh, currently we know that he's pushing um, to try and uh, get out Kenyans, Riley Kenyans uh, behind him uh, to achieve electoral reforms. And that's a good place to begin this evening, this discussion, because um, in the last 24 hours, we have seen what's happening in Mexico. There has been a huge crowd that have been witnessed in Mexico and most Mexican towns, and they're calling for electoral reforms. Now, theirs might be a little, a little bit different because they say the government is trying to undermine the electoral institute by cutting its budget and cutting its staffing but all over the world this is not a new phenomenon because everyone is trying to push for electoral reforms and back here at home that is one of the things that Rai Lodinga is pushing for so thank you so much for coming and for um, allowing us to come to your home actually let's begin with that you've seen what's happening in Mexico and it seems this is a phenomenon that is getting root and taking root all over the country is this one of the reasons that you are asking for electoral reforms and in a way that you're rallying people behind you and calling them out of the street. Is this one of the reasons? The, not, uh, we're not uh, imitating any, any country. We're dealing with our situation here. But Ken, I can tell you that um, I get a lot of information from the whole of the African continent. They're telling me that this is not a Kenyan affair that this is a, a, a continental affair. Because they're saying that um, since the introduction of multipartism in the early 90s, a trend has emerged where uh, the leadership is actually taking the country back to a uh, single party. There's the emergence of uh, the strongman syndrome. And elections are being held merely as rituals. Uh, the leadership cannot leave. If the leadership leave, they impose a new one. Or this institution called Electoral Commission is used to rig people into power. People who have been defeated, but basically they're being rigged. So they're talking about uh, electoral justice. The word electoral justice is now uh, become the vogue around the, the continent, that the vote should count. Our people who have voted at the ballot is what should count. But at the moment, they say that the, 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 the counters of the ballot are more important than the voters. So the people th begin to think that there's no need to go and vote if your vote will not count will not make a difference. Already, there's a predetermined outcome. And, and that's why we, we, we are moving on this way. Okay, predetermined outcome. One of the things that you have been saying in the last few days, if there are no electoral reforms, then Kenyans have no reason to go to the ballot. Do you think you have that ability to tell Kenyans not to go to the ballot, and they will not go to the ballot? And what is that one reason why you're really advocating for this? I'm not even saying that I'm going to tell them not to go to the ballot. It is just a, a logical consequence of what is happening in the country. You take a country like Cameroon, P people, the, the, the elections are held as rituals. 20% uh, of the voters turn up. Sometimes it's even 15%. Why? Because it has already been predetermined. You've got a president who has been in power since 1979, and, and again he's going to run again, and he's now senile. Sometimes he even forgets where he's sitting, but he's, he'll be really elected. The, the, that the outcome is already predetermined. So if the people feel that what will the outcome will not reflect their efforts, then they just stay at home. Okay. So you see, 
the, the, the drop from 2013, 2017 to this, this time around. Exactly. Uh, and if what has happened just now persists, I can tell you without fear of contradiction that um, 2027, you'll be lucky to get 50%, even 40% turnout. So, of the so, total registered voters. Yes. There was an indictment because 8 million Kenyans out of the total registered numbers did not get out of this election. Mm -hmm. Are you saying even in the Kenyan election they thought it was predetermined? Yes, quite a number of them. You remember that in 2017 the Supreme Court nullified the, the results and uh, we refused to go to the uh, second round because of uh, the failure by the Electoral Commission to, 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 to change anything. So uh, that is responsible. Now what has happened now is so blatant. Kenyans see it, you know? More blatant than 20, 2007? It's much more blatant. 2007, of course, you, you saw what they did. They uh, stopped. But it was close. It was uh, the, the difference was um, less, uh, less than a million. But this time round, the difference is about two million. Uh, and, 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 and people now people see it. You can feel it. That result, that, that uh, um, result of the whistleblower, cannot be changed. You see, the the IBC stamp is there. The signature of agency is there. Mm -hmm. But is that barcode, which if you scan, shows you the location, the date, and the time of transmission okay. from the, that location. So, so those results are not fake. They cannot be changed. Cannot Let, be changed. Let's, let's, let's use your stand, your political stand currently, and um, what you are talking about, that you won this election as as a starting point, who would you blame for bungling this election and trick, stealing your victory? Is it Wafula Chebukati or is it uh, President William Ruto? Who would you blame for this? No, I don't, I don't blame uh, William Ruto. Okay. The, the, the guy is uh, the man, but he was working on his behalf. Uh, Chebukati was also working on, on behalf of, of, of William Ruto. And, and this is a plan that had been on for quite some time. We have now done, carried out our investigations, who are involved. Uh, we even have um, telephone conversations of people who are actually doing this thing. Uh, uh, who was talking to who, okay? Um, uh, e even, even all the way up, up to uh, the su Supreme Court. Okay. So the uh, evidence that we have is um, substantial. Uh, it cannot be uh, controverted. Mr. Chibukati uh, is involved in procurement of the ICT infrastructure. And the collusion between him and, uh, and, and the executive officer of the IBC with those people called mathematics, how it was all contrived, uh, it was all designed to achieve this uh, outcome. So it is a, it's, it's a criminal, it's criminal. And that, what is most annoying is that the criminals themselves can now be again charging other people. You see the four commissioners who are standing by the truth and saying what Chibukati is announcing is not the genuine result, mm -hmm. are now, being, are now the, the criminals. And this is the set up a tribunal uh, consisting of a chair by a judge who is being wanted in the United States, you know, for, for, for some crimes. And he now comes out and, and says that Azimio wanted to rig elections. It's laughable. It's so annoying the, 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 the kind of any. Confidence these guys have that they can try to lie to the whole nation the way they're doing. We, we said this must be an end. 
We have said that this must be an end. We don't want Kenya to be run again this way. We cannot be a nation of crooks. Okay. And a few crooks cannot impose leadership on the people forever. With hindsight, um, do you think you should have maintained the temple in the attempt to remove Ofula Chebukati from the helm of IBC? With hindsight now, before the handshake, do you think you should have done it then? Yes, we, we, we wanted to. We, really, we should have done it. Or we should not have agreed to go to elections under Chaku, Ofula Chebukati. You see? But uh, uh, the, the, the thing was uh, the fear that the country was going to to break apart. That really was the reason. But even after that, you see, as one of the diplomats, you know, the reason why you have got odd numbers in commissioners is so that there can never be a tie. So those commissioners cannot be three. You know, they cannot be four. They can only be three. They cannot be six. They cannot be eight. They cannot be ten. It will be an odd number, you see, so that there's not a tie. That's why there were seven. Now, there are three against four. And, and, and the, the three go and announce the result, and it is accepted. I asked a diplomat here, ambassador of a very senior country in the EU, I asked him if this were to happen in the EU, you know, in a country, country where elections are held and, and four commissioners say no and three commissioners say yes, okay. would that be acceptable? Mm -hmm. What did they say? They said that would not be acceptable. That country would be suspended from EU. So then I said, but here it's been accepted because this is Africa. And in Africa you can afford to apply this different or lower standards. Is it because it's Africa or because it's Kenya and Kenyans just let things go? Kenyans forget about it. Is it because it's Africa? It's Africa. They, 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 they say you can afford lower standards. So we are saying, no, Africa should not be judged by lower standards. If it is wrong for in, the U, in Europe, it should also be wrong, wrong in, Africa. in Africa. I'm yes. going to talk about the international community in a short while. But I want to finish this. You have said that um, um, Wafula Chebukati was working on behest of uh, the President William Ruto. And of course, you don't blame the President entirely for this, so you blame Wafula Chebukati for, for most of it. Then why don't you think your political competitor, who is now sitting on the seat, I should be allowed to continue? Why do you think he should leave, and yet most of the blame is heaped on the Electoral Commission, which should, be, should have been a neutral arbiter in this election? No. What is right is that the winner of the elections should be the one who is in the seat. So we are saying that he's an imposter because he did not win the elections. So if he had got any conscience, his conscience should prick him that I lost the elections uh, and I shouldn't be here. You see? But you can see that he's even resisting the opening of the servers. He does not want the servers to be audited. Uh, because he, he, he believes that we are going to say, uh, uh, forget and move on, you see? So uh, this has been the mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has been something that has been replicated in many African countries. After the elections have been rigged, the observers have written their reports. Then uh, they just say, forget and move on. But you see, the information that we have it's so glaring, so daring. Even those observers did not know what, what had happened. Because I have actually explained in details the infrastructure that was put in place for the rigging of these elections. Uh, I've told you that there were four servers, one in the cloud in, in Holland, one in Venezuela, one at uh, anniversary towers, one industrial area, the portal at, at Bomas. And I've also said that it was the server in Venezuela that was altering results and then f transmitting to, to Bomas. 
That's how, why you saw during the, hear, the, the court hearing, one of our lawyers, uh, Julie Soweto, showed, you know, live on the I, I, IBC portal uh, transmission, one of the uh, Kim's kids transmitting results from a polling station in Mount Elgon. And eight minutes later, it was transmitting results from Nyeri. And when they were asked, because each Kim's kit was supposed to be having its own ad ad identification, unique, identifier, yes. unique, nothing could be replicated. Uh, the need, remember the kind of excuses that I I IBC gave? And you show the, the signature of that Jose Camargo in, 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 the, in, the, in the portal because he was the one who was sitting there changing results the way he wanted because there was a predetermined outcome. If you look at the figures, the figures from uh, uh, the uh, Chebukati, 7.1 uh, uh, against uh, 7.2 against 6.9. Uh, and then with the one in this portal, the one which has now come out from the whistleblower, whistleblower is 8.1 against 5.9. The total is the same. It's all the same. So that's why. And we can even show you, we can even show you from our own analysis where they were removing. We can show you in Mombasa. You saw that like, the other day, just three days ago, they were saying in Mombasa that Ruto's, the votes had moved from 26% to 45%. Uh, we can show you in polling stations in Mombasa where our votes were taken and given to Ruto. Ruto did not get more than 25% votes in Mombasa, but it's, it's, it went up to 45%. It was taken by the Venezuela server? Yes. And the court said, real time, how could it happen in the span of seconds? Yes. That was one of the things your lawyers couldn't explain in court, mm -hmm. how it was real time. Because I was in studio, for example, and these forms, by midnight, we had gotten more than half of the forms on the same day. So the question was, how was it happening real time, changing? And that's one of the questions that went to court. How, did, how do you explain? How does your analysis, your analyst explain that discrepancy? You see what is happening is that these guys are receiving results uh, when they, where they are, and the results are being the, 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 uh, going to the servers, and they are just altering them, there and then transmitting to to the, the portal at, at Boomers. So uh, almost at the same time you are receiving it, or a few seconds later, uh, or, or a few minutes later. Uh, because you are not there, you don't know at what time it was coming out at the at, at Bomas. You see, because what should have happened is that when they are announcing results at a polling station, the media should pick it up should, and announce it. And then when they go to the constituency telling center, the same thing should happen. When it is being announced there. It should be also announced at the constituency telling center so that uh, uh, people can be adding. But remember that Chibukati did not allow that. What is happening is um, they are being altered as they come from the constituency, the ones which are being altered. Now, you, you remember Mr. Chibukati says that the presidential uh, elections are finalized at the constituency level. Which is actually the court, let's say that. No, Chibukati himself had announced at Bombers of Kenya. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have it, we have we've got that tape. Okay. That he will not announce the results until he has received 290 yeah. from 34 Bs, plus the one for the diaspora, making them 291. He announced that, okay? Now, I invite you to go and look at, because 
sorry, the, 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 the Electoral Commission is supposed to publish the results of the elections in Kenya Gazette uh, within specified dates. Now go and look at what is published in the Kenya Gazette. This is not the 290 constituencies. It's published the, the result of uh, the, 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 the presidential elections based on counties, 47 counties. Counties are not electoral units. There's no county returning officer. But why did he do it? Because he feared that if he published the constituencies results, the returning officers would detect. And say, this was not for me. This is not for me. OK. See, that, that's why he has not, therefore, up to now, he has not validly published the results okay. of the elections. And no one is holding him to account. It's only the politicians who are complaining mm. and asking for the publication of these results. Mm. So no one is holding him to account because he's out of the office and doesn't speak for the IBC mm. as at now. Yeah, it, it, exactly. This is what I was saying that what we are seeing here is impunity of the highest order. This fellow is out of office, is the one who messed up. Now the other commissioners who stood by the right thing are the ones who are being persecuted. Is there something that can be done from where you sit with your experience? Is there something that can be done to an officer, a state officer, who, as you say, commits an offense and then goes out of office at the end of their term, enjoys the parks, and is out there. Is there something you think that can be done, that Kenyans don't know? What can be done to a Fula Chabukati in your view? This is a question we are putting to Kenyans now. That's why we are calling for mass action. OK. This is how we want to answer this matter. OK. Yes. Will you forget this time and move on? No. We will not forget and move on because the future of this country depends on resolution of this dispute. If this is not done, we will not have a country. Uh, and, and the consequences will be too grave to contemplate. I am not saying that uh, you have lost some time since you started pushing for electoral reforms. But what I want to ask you is this. When you are more energetic and when you had the vigor and the drive then, when you had all these people behind you, for example, William Ruto was behind you in 2007, when you had them all behind you, you forgot and moved on. When most of these strong people who have propped you in for so many years have left, you believe that you still have the energy, that you can push and you not forget and move on, or it's even easier for you right now to forget and move on because you've done your part for the country. You see, it is, it's not a question of me having done my part for the country. I, what I'm doing is for posterity. Uh, that other time, remember the country was burning and uh, the international community moved in here. The, you remember people like Desmond Tutu were here, Kenneth Matiba, uh, Kenneth Kaunda, mm -hmm. uh, Benjamin Mukapa, uh, we had uh, Kofi Annan, we had uh, no, President um, Kufu from Ghana, uh, and other people from the UK, the US, uh, uh, all, all, all came here. And they all put pressure on us to agree to a negotiation. Yeah. And eventually we agreed to, to negotiations. <laughs> That's how we appointed uh, the, the teams um, for, for, you remember. Uh, was represented by Salim Mudavadi, uh, William Ruto, Sally Koswe, and Jim Sorengo in those, those talks. And the other side, likewise. Uh, they negotiated. In the end, uh, we, the, 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 uh, where they could not agree is what we now uh, agreed uh, with the, uh, Kofi Annan, uh, me and Kibaki, and we had Kofi Annan, Benjamin Mkapa, and uh, Mr. Kikwete. Okay. So, so then come uh, uh, this other time, the 2017, uh, we uh, did not just move on. What happened, as you remember, we uh, took an oath 
office, and the country was, 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 was on the brink of burning. And uh, we negotiated with Mr. Uru Kenyatta and signed an MOU that uh, stipulated certain uh, amendments, changes that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. That MOU is in the public domain. Then we set up a, a task force to go around the country, talk to people, and make recommendations to changes, which ended up in uh, BBI. And so that the BBI was uh, uh, dismissed by the courts on the ground that President Uhuru had, had played a role in uh, initiating it. Okay? Uh, but but it, 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 it was reforms which were necessary. Okay. Uh, and now you can see uh, even this uh, Kenya Kwanza people are trying to imitate it. So uh, I did not compromise. I did not go into government. My, my, my ground was to ensure that reforms were carried out. That's why I asked my people to be patient, who was agreed to reforms. And we formed a bipartisan task force. Okay. See, uh, and these people have been talking about, oh, it is a handshake which uh, uh, is responsible for the messes. I did not even appoint a CAS the government. I did not appoint a cabinet minister or even a head of any parastatal. Yes, sir. If anything else, it is Lumina Ruto who was the deputy president, earning all the perks and enjoying all the security support and so on. Okay. And now he comes out and disowns everything that was done by his government okay. and, and blames it on me. See, and, and, that Kenyans are, are too and it's every day in the public rallies, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, they state it every day, <coughs> sorry, together with their uh, lieutenants. Uh, what will it take? Because you mentioned two issues. I want to go over this topic. You mentioned two issues. You mentioned the country was burning the instability and there was need to come to dialogue. What will it take for you, for example, um, a leader um, of your stature, long term, with a huge following half of the country? What will it take to sit down? and talk to William Ruto? We, 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 there's, there's no basis of talking right now. Because he's insisting that he was selected, he's moving ahead. Uh, we told him certain things, for example, we said, electoral commission is the referee in an election. It cannot be appointed by one side at all. There must be negotiations on, on how to do it. And we also even say that the way things are, with the kind of mess that we went through, we need to now actually look at the Electoral Commission afresh and see how to restructure it, so even decentralize it, so that you have got uh, uh, units at the counties responsible for, for, for uh, telling and announcement of results. So it is a major issue, it's not just a matter of are putting up a select team mm -hmm. to go and, and, and uh, interview and recommend people who are going to be commissioners. We're just going to replicate uh, a Chebukati thing. Okay. Instead of three Chebukatis, you're going to have seven Chebukatis. Okay. So it, it means <coughs> that it's not ready for any, 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 any talks. Mm -hmm. It's not ready for any talks. And you see, they also have now condemned the other four commissioners whose term had not, not even ended. Mm -hmm. See. Of situation will be that those four commissioners must be reinstated with full benefits. Okay. And then uh, in, in a restructured uh, commission. Okay. But we must sit down and talk about the co electoral commission okay. as stakeholders. Okay. Yeah. Does that, does that, that, that means there could be room to talk to the president. Could that room also include you forgetting about the public barrazas and letting him? run the country. Is that room also available or it's only <coughs> based on reforms? No, that, mm -hmm. that has agreed to open the server. Yeah. Okay? Agreed to open the server. That's, that's the first one. Secondly, stop recruitment of uh, IBC commissioners. Okay? 
And then three is the issue of the cost of living in the country. You must address Kenyans are suffering. They are suffering seriously. Some of them cannot put bread on the table. You know, uh, some children cannot go to school today. And the, the price of basic commodities, uh, wonga, uh, fuel, cooking oil, uh, everything is, is, is too high for the people. So that is also an issue which is urgent, that it must, must be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're saying that they are listening too much to other people. You know, the, the subsidies which were introduced by Uhuru were not picked from air. You see, many countries are going through a similar situation like Kenya, and they have dealt with it differently. Even the United States has came up with measures to mitigate the impact of this global recession. Brazil, Chile, uh, Japan, India, uh, Egypt, and so on. So you just don't walk in and see you're, you're stopping uh, this uh, the, the, the way it was done. Mm -hmm. It has been advised, I don't know by who. Eh? Remember, you used to have what you call Kazim Tani. Kazim Tani was basically a replica of Kazuka Vijana. Kazim Tani was actually putting money in the pockets of the youth and, and women. So it was a program that should have been continued, you know, for, for quite some time. Now you come up with what you call at the Hustler Fund. Uh, and Hustler Fund, you are giving the youth 500 shillings as a loan. Which business can somebody start with 500 shillings? Okay. Uh, okay. So if he meets you on tour and not one opening the servers, because clearly he's adamant about opening the servers. I know you're also adamant you need it open, but he says he meets you on the two. Cost of living is the address. IBC, he sits on the table. Will you still demand the last one, opening of the servers? Because that's a can of worms. That is where we begin. That is where we begin. The servers must be opened. The servers must be open. If he knows that he won the elections. Why, 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 why does he fear? You mentioned something about um, having done your investigations and um, you have evidence now on how this, what you call, crime was perpetrated. I remember your chief agent also said it, the BOMAS, this is a, a criminal enterprise. But you mentioned um, the judiciary, even the calls that were made uh, to the judiciary and you said you know by who, what they said. Now, do you believe um, your case was hot air? And secondly, do you believe uh, William Ruto and his team colluded with the judiciary? Yes, now, um, let me first say, the language that was used in that judgment is unjudiciary, as you know. Uh, and, and secondly, the manner in which it, it was done. Because, you know, remember 2017, we had a Supreme Court, then presided over by Justice Maraga. Each and every judge wrote their judgment, and they read their judgment. Okay? Because um, there was no, no, no concurrence. Here, the ruling is written by one person. The suspicion that it was written somewhere but I don't want to speculate, but the, the, the language is itself speaks volumes. The language that was used, the insolent language that was used. And, um, but we also have looked at the telephone logs of those judges uh, whom they were, they were talking to, uh, who uh, met who somewhere, which I don't want to, to go into details. But um, uh, what they produced actually leaves a lot to be desired. And we say that Kenyans are disappointed. That's why we say that 
we respect, but we don't agree with their ruling at all. Because first, they denied us access to the server. They should have actually held their ground that we'd be allowed. And the Kai Court Register was responsible for doctoring the report that was eventually presented. The register yes. of the High Court? The, 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 the man they sat there yes. from, from, the, from the register's office. Who was in charge was of in that charge. process? Yeah, because our people are ready to come to testify how he... The, the, that he was responsible for doctoring. Yes. You know that's high-level accusation against a judicial officer. Yes, but I, I, I got my, my experts who would come and, and tell you that this is what they came out with, but this, what, what was presented was different. Okay. So there, there was coalition. You believe there was a coalition. Yes. What is the remedy? What is, the, is this also a part of a public baraza engagement, the remedy to the judiciary? We need to basically interrogate all of our institutions. Okay. All our institutions mm -hmm. to, to, to bring it. That's why we are going to the people. See, who are supreme, who are more than the judiciary, more than the executive, okay. more, more, and more than parliament. There are talks that during the day you're talking to us publicly about public barrages and what you intend to do, but during the night there are emissaries, there are people who are being sent to you, and people you are sending to William Ruto, and you are up for, Kenyans are up for another handshake. And we have seen even a memo from the president going to parliament on the office of the opposition. So during the day, are you telling Kenyans a different thing from what you're doing at night? Not at all. And I don't know of any emissaries who have been sent anywhere. I, I can uh, say without a fear of contradiction that not for me, I have not sent anybody to Mr. William Ruto. Uh, Has he sent people to you? No. Okay. Not that, that I know. He has not sent anybody to me. I've also not sent anybody to him. What I'm saying in the day is what I say also at night. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and you see that they've been talking about, oh, these people want to attack Nusum Kati. We see the way that rogue uh, deputy president mm -hmm. has been running around saying that these people, Tunajua, our Tunajua, want to attack Nusum Kati. And uh, this time around, they've been known to Nusum Kati. We are not looking for half a loaf. And even under Uhuru's government, we did not get even a quarter of a loaf. We did not get even a quarter of a loaf. The only time that we went into government was the one that was negotiated by the uh, through the mediation of the international community. 2008. 2008. And we even had to amend the constitution to create the position of the prime minister, which we, uh, we occupied. Mm -hmm. And we appointed a joint cabinet, 50-50, to came back at 50 and out of 50. That was that, that, that time. Since that time, we have not been in government okay. uh, at all. It's all useless propaganda. So you are not talking. We, we will not be surprised sometimes in April that uh, Raila Ding and William Ruto are having a handshake at the lawns of uh, Harambe House or in State House? Not at all. Have you seen William Ruto since he was, uh, uh, he was uh, inaugurated? No. Okay. Even on TV. <laughs> yes. You've seen it. So, um, the office of the opposition, he says that uh, this is not about Raila Odinga. This is about the loser in the next elections, the subsequent elections. And it's not about you. Do you think he's trying to manage you by giving you an office? I'll give you a background to that uh, memo. Okay? The memo, uh, the, this thing, because they knew that you were well, not going to go to government, and this is from one of the senior diplomats in the country, not one, several. Uh, when they talked to him, this was in July, uh, what would you do in the event that you lose the elections? He said that he wanted to be a very powerful uh, opposition leader. He That's wants, William Ruto? Yes. Okay. That's what he told them, that uh, he wants to be a strong opposition leader. 
and they want to help them, uh, them to help him, pressurize me to create a position of a uh, position of, of a special, I mean, an opposition leader mm -hmm. in parliament. So at that time, in his mind, Raila Odinga was going to be the president. Yes. Okay. So now, first of all, after the elections, when this happened, then they approached him to say that what you had said you wanted to be created, we want you now to create it. Okay? And that is, that, is, that is the origin of this proposal. The one who made this proposal, and uh, that's how he wrote now the position of uh, official opposition leader mm -hmm. in, in, in parliament. This I've gotten from several diplomats. Okay. Now, uh, but you see, you remember the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the report of the uh, the task force uh, on uh, the BBI. Remember the BBI failed because they said that the president cannot and should not initiate a process uh, 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 constitutional reform. Mm -hmm. Now what is done, he knows it's, it's illegal, you write to the speaker, huh? and then the speaker also acts as somebody who is, had not studied law, now asking the committee to generate a, 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 a bill. See, the speaker should just sit there and wait for bills to be brought to him. He cannot the, instruct a bill the, to The be. president should not write to, to the speaker. If the government wants uh, a bill to be brought. There are procedures. The memo is brought to the cabinet with a draft bill, which is approved. In the, those days, it is given to the Attorney General. The Attorney General will now go and complete the bill, the bill, and bring it to Parliament. That, then Attorney General is a member of Parliament, yeah. ex, -officio. ex officio. But now, the Attorney General will give the bill to the leader of majority. The leader of majority will come to the House and uh, uh, present the, the, the bill to the House, uh, to the, the, the Speaker, and then it, it will be brought to the House. So uh, it, it is not the other way around. The Speaker has nothing to do with, 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 with bills. Mm -hmm. What Ruto would have done would basically have asked his majority leader to bring the bill drafted to the House. Okay. And this is just not done. Okay. So what the, what's going on there right now is very illegal. Okay. Mm. Um, I want to talk now about your party, ODM and Azimio as a whole. In the last election, we saw the numbers. Uh, you had more numbers in Parliament. You had more numbers in the Senate as Azimio. And of course, you claim um, you say you won the presidency, but you have lost significantly, including very close people who ordinarily you wouldn't think will stop um, and even think of leaving Raila Odinga's side. They have left. Um, and now probably you're remaining with very few membership, strong members with very few membership. How have you lost control of the people who came to parliament or to leadership, courtesy of Azimil? Can you tell me who you, you mean those who have left? Oh, we see them every day in the media. Just the other day, we had a number of them at State House. But did they say they've left? They buy, you don't have to say it, but when you appear, your party said they did not ask for permission to go to the president. You have dismissed it and said there's no development that is at State House. Yourself, you've dismissed it and said, why did they go to State House? Development is not found in State House. So these are your members of parliament. We had people like David Uchieng, for example, who was in Azimio, and straight after that, I said his allegiance is on the other side. But he clearly was on your side. We saw him all over. So there's quite a number who have beefed up the number of for Kenya Kwanzaa in parliament. You see, David Uchieng's case is different because he had his own party, as you know, and he had an agreement with Azimio, uh, just like the other party, UDM, uh, from uh, Mandera, uh, Mandera yeah. and, and, and uh, uh, Marsabit, uh, the, the, those ones immediately when uh, the results were declared, when they saw that uh, Ruto is going to form the government, they moved. There are those people who say they must always be in government. 
So they were in Azimio because Azimio was going to form government. government. Mm -hmm. But when uh, Azimio did not uh, form the government, then they moved. But you need to know that I got majority of votes in those areas. I got majority of votes in, in, in Mandera. I uh, got majority of votes in uh, Marsabit, even in Isiolo. But they moved without even consulting their people. Uh, and basically because they want to be uh, all the times in what they consider to be warm. The other uh, ones here, the ones you talk about uh, from uh, Nyanza, uh, they were there when Ruto went to Nyanza and they said that Ruto had promised certain projects with their following. And that's why they went to, to State House. I've received communication from them. I, I could even show you uh, written communication saying they did not uh, defect from ODM. They just went because they are following those projects. Felix uh, Oduori is not from Nyanza, he's from Langata. Yes. He was there. Yes. Yeah. He, he was there, yes. It's, it's from, uh, the, he says uh, the president is his friend, and um, he's, he's gone there, but uh, uh, he has not said he's left ODM. He's, he's not said that he's left ODM. Okay. I am really the one who has said, um, give them the benefit of doubt. Uh, uh, we'll deal with them. Okay. If they want, because the, the party wants to carry out a disciplinary action against them. But I've said, uh, give them the benefit of doubt. Mm -hmm. But because just going to state house, it's not, it's not a crime. It's, as long as you make it uh, known the, the, to your the, party. The, the party. But yeah. going to the sign, the way they've done, the way they did is it's a problem. Okay. Okay? Okay. So if they, 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 they want to, mm -hmm. To move, you know, it's not the f going to be the first time. Yeah, you move Remember, forward. we used to have defections yeah. in those days, but in those days, those people were doing what was required by law. Mm -hmm. If you were moving away from the party that sponsored you to parliament, you have to resign and go and contest elections in your new party. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we will uh, we welcome them to go and and, and, and contest. Okay. Yeah. If if they leave, mm -hmm. I have just two more questions for you um, about uh, the AU position and of course the international community. I promise to go back to the international community. The other day you said you don't care about traveling abroad and the international community should not tell Kenyans what to do. You want to deal with your own internal problems. Mm -hmm. Which countries were you referring to that have threatened sanction? if at all they are sanctioned, because as we are currently, I haven't heard of any sanctions. And um, do you think it's possible for a leader of your state to stay without traveling to the other countries? You see, first, uh, I was just reacting to what was in the media that they attributed to actually uh, some members uh, of, 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 of uh, Kenya Kwisha or Kenya Kwanza uh, that they had petitioned some countries in the West to bar me from uh, traveling to those, to those countries mm -hmm. because I'm causing trouble here. And I was just telling them, I was not even telling those countries. Okay. I was just telling them that um, uh, I don't have to travel to any of, of, of those countries, but, but I should not be intimidated uh, with travel ban. Uh, that was also, also also telling those countries in the okay. event that somebody had that kind of uh, idea or thinking that um, I would feel a pinch. Uh, I, I don't have bank accounts that I, I want to go and, uh, and and operate outside the country. Uh, and and um, so I mean I, I, uh, I'm comfortable. Secondly, I was just saying that. What we're dealing with is an internal Kenya affair. And we don't want any country to interfere in our own internal affairs. They have their own uh, problems in their own countries, and we don't interfere in, in uh, dealing with them. So we want 
that to be allowed to face this issue as Kenyans okay. uh, and, 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 and find a, a lasting solution to it. Okay. Yeah. The deputy president who you called rogue says that you lost your position at AU because of your activism at home, because you're trying to push the government uh, through public barrages. Did you lose your position or the letter that we saw online was actually true that you asked specifically to be relieved of your duties? Did you lose it? I did not lose it because I had already indicated uh, to Mr. Faki that I was going to, to request to be relieved uh, of that position because I had done my, my, my best, but uh, there's a lot of uh, demand for my time back home here. Okay. You see, uh, of course, they have said themselves that when Ruto went to Addis, he had a meeting with Mr. Faki, asked him uh, uh, to, to remove me. That, that is not um, uh, in doubt. But Mr. Faki, I think, told him that I had myself requested that uh, uh, I, I, I wanted to, to be relieved of, of, of my duties. So it, it is not him who had sacked me. I don't know if uh, he had asked Mr. Faki uh, without me having asked to be relieved, whether Mr. Faki would have agreed, would have agreed. I don't think he would have agreed. Mm -hmm. So it's pure coincidence. Probably. You had asked, Ruto asked, and they were forming this new body inside the AU to take over your affairs. It was no, no, no. You see, what's happening mm -hmm. is that AU had NEPAD as uh, uh, an organization that was, was created for implementation of projects. Now, this NEPAD was being converted to AUDA, African uh, Union. African Union Development Agency. Uh, now, now it's now called Aouda NEPAD. But eventually they're going to discard the name mm -hmm. NEPAD. Okay. And I was responsible for uh, this transition. Okay? And uh, my agenda was agenda of dealing with infrastructure, specific, specifically uh, under that uh, Aouda. And what I've done, I've streamlined it. And but the legacy that I've left is that uh, I've cre cre created uh, an agency for uh, uh, funding, okay? Infrastructure fund uh, unit, uh, which I've helped to, to, to create so that the African countries can be able to access cheap uh, credit for infrastructure development. Because right now, most of these countries are either to go to the World Bank, IMF, or some country in the West, or China, okay? But we are able to come up with an idea that there are quite a lot of idle funds in the continent. Uh, you've got uh, pension funds, and you've got uh, sovereign funds, and insurance funds which are actually lying idle in the continent. And if you can pull this, uh, you can get a big uh, reservoir. Each uh, of these uh, units investing 5% of their, of their uh, total capital into the infrastructure. It's, it's, it's not that they are, they are giving us a charity, it's an investment. Okay. So, so instead of the, our countries suffering, going to borrow at very expensive rates from the World Bank, IMF, uh, f from China and so on, they will be having African fund, okay. infrastructure fund. Okay. That is my brainchild. Okay. Uh, and, and, and I'm very happy to have done that. Okay. Yeah. But that's one of the things that you've left at AU. Yes. yes. All right. So as I wind up, um, there's a topic of discussion on social media, mainstream media, the ruling from the Supreme Court the other day. Uh, I know the former president has declined completely as a leader, as a, an elder of this country. What would you say about that discussion that is going on online as, after the Supreme Court ruling on gay rights? I don't want to talk about the subject now. Okay. Hmm. Um, thank you so much for 
allowing us to talk to you this evening. And there's so much to talk about. Thanks. Always a pleasure. So little time. But I want to say thank you so much and uh, all the best in what you're doing. Thank you so much, Ken. Asante sana. Asante sana. And thank you so much for watching whenever we have an opportunity again. And I know going forward, there'll be a lot of things they're doing. Just remember, eight days to the clock, his countdown runs for the ultimatum given to the president. So let's wait. Hopefully we'll have another session to sit with Azimio leader Raila Odinga and talk about issues of this country. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening.